What's up, everybody? It's the homie True Teller, the Street Reporter, and today I got a classic interview. A lot of people always say, Truth, you got to hit that road, man. When you hit that road, can you bring us somebody that a lot of people might not know about, but a lot of people know about? Today, I think I hit that right on the head. I'm actually in Texas right now, so for the people who don't know what's going on, you'll let them know exactly what your name is and where you're from, bro. Yo, it's your boy Fat Boy Friends, my AKA Hibachi. My boy Dallas, Texas, Greedy Grove Side. Uh, most definitely. How you doing, Fresh? I'm good, man. I'm good. Man, Fresh, I want to be honest with you. I got up on you through social media, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I actually was listening to a song of yours some years ago, and then you came across my Explorer, and it made me feel like this is the moment I got to chop it up with you, man. Yeah. So how long you been doing this shit, bro? Since like 2014. Okay. About eight years. Okay. Yeah. Was it hard getting a name in this shit? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah it was. What's some of the sauce you did to get a name? Because you got a blue check, bro. Uh, I uh pressed up CDs, mm -hmm. the strip club. I don't even lie. You say the pressed up CDs, the so that's something that people still doing. This back in 2014, okay. 2014, 2015, I uh pressed up like 500 copies. Mm -hmm. Had a mixtape called Subwoofers, mm -hmm. and uh went to Onyx, the strip club, and I uh, gave the CDs to the DJs, and, and really that's how I learned how to promote in the clubs because the DJs was like bring me a flash drive. So that's basically how I started, just in the strip clubs and in the streets, hand to hand. Right. You, know. you know, people tell me about the strip club shit. That's real. Yeah. That break records in the strip club. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, dope. Sure. A lot of people tell me that. You know, it ain't really like that in like the Chicago area. It's more like you got to break it on YouTube. And, yeah. In the streets out here, you can go to the club. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. How was it growing up in Texas? It was cool. I mean, you know. A lot of poverty, a lot of food stuff, you know what I mean? On my side of it, you know what I mean? Right. Section A, you know what I mean? We got it out the mud, hustling. I come from a family of hustlers, my daddy, my granny, my grandpa, my brother, uncles, you know, everybody hustles, so you know. You know, um, when I do my research out here a little while ago, you know, everybody talk about like the candy pain, the females, it's hot out here, everybody got their clothes on and kicking it, they yeah. having fun. But recently, it's been like a rise in shootings and killings and murders and shit like that. Yeah. Right? Where did some of that come from? A lack of money, lack of understanding, no guidance. The internet. The internet. The internet, yeah. What do you mean by that? I just feel like the, the, these youngsters that are here now, they, they see a lot of stuff going on on the internet and it's trending. You know, a lot of the drill music, a lot of the beef, a lot of that. And so, like, you know, people want to stand for something and they want to stand on something and they feel like it's getting them attention. Right. So I feel like the 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 hunger for attention is what got them, is what got these youngsters out here, you know, living how they're living right now. So quite naturally, when you know the youngsters out here living like they're living, you're gonna keep you're gonna keep your protection too, so that, you know. So it's a must, you gotta have it on you. You gotta now. have that brain on you, for sure. Now. For sure. Yeah. Hey, that's crazy. You know, I kind of want to jump right into it. The people know you on Truth Teller TV. The fans that's been following me for a while know I got a piece of paper right here. I kind of want to jump right into it and ask you a few questions. Let's get it. I've been hearing a lot about blogs out here. It seems like the blogs is taking over in Texas right now. Yeah. You know, it uh, seems like a lot of people doing things to get on the blogs. And shit yeah. Like that. Has the blogs made it dangerous for just everyday living on here? Or no? Nah? The, the individuals made it dangerous Individual. for everyday living. It, it's not the blogs. Yeah. So the street shit is like, the street shit is in the music now. I know exactly. That. Right. Yeah. So that's how it got to be now. Yeah. yeah. You can't just be a regular rapper. You got to be from a community. You gotta nah, that's, that's not a fact at all. That's mm -hmm. not a fact at all. I know, I know a couple guys who's just not super street or super gangster, but they making, they making noise in the industry as far as music is concerned. Like, you know, what people don't realize when it comes to music is you can be stuck in a, a musical box. I'm, right. I'm from the streets, I'm from the hood. So quite naturally, you know, ass shaking music in the club, talking mm. about drugs and drilling and all that type <laughs> of shit. But then again, you go to the South Side of music, the Caribbean music, the R&B music. See, right. I'm a songwriter, a lot of people don't know that. Right. You know, so when you get to that South Side of music, people still streaming and making money and get shows. Right. So you don't have to live like that in order to be successful as an artist. Right. That's See. a big misconception. So you don't gotta just nah. force yourself in that street shit. Nah. Right. Niggas be out here crashing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like for real. So it's, it, it, it is some wild shit going on out here. Yeah, too, most right. definitely, yeah. Is the whole DFW, is it is it unified? As far as Dallas Fort Worth or as far as just like Dallas? Dallas, Fort Worth, 
urban everywhere I have that one. I'm gonna speak for me. I can go anywhere. I, mean, I got homes in four, stop six, south side. I, mean, I can go anywhere. I don't have no problems with no beef. I don't, I don't got no ops. You feel what I'm saying? Quite naturally, everybody got haters, and you know, I get a lot of attention, but like, I don't have no problems. I can go anywhere. Right. I'm speaking for Fat Boy Fresh. You see what I'm saying? But when, Page man, though, hoodie on some Nah, stuff. none of that. Just like this, her hanging, no mask, all that. Tattoos showing, like the whole nine, anywhere. Oak Cliff, I'm from the Grove, Oak Cliff, uh, Pleasant Grove, West Dallas, East Dallas, I can go anywhere. Okay, now you just said something I kind of want to stop for a second. I've been hearing a lot about this place called the Grove. Yeah. That's where you from? Yeah. Is it, like, are you numb to it? Or do you see some of the shit I see when I read the newspaper? Yeah, I see it all the time. And you still go outside? I still go outside. I ain't got no reason not to. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's normal? It's normal. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie, I be reading the newspaper, they say places like Oak Cliff, The Grove, and a few more places out here, they say truth, don't go to those places. They say, they say do not go to The Grove or Oak Cliff, stay the hell away from out there. I'm gonna just say this, an individual will know by looking at you if you're the type of person they wanna try. I'm looking at you right now. You from the streets. I can tell. <laughs> you know, I'm just being real. Like, but you know, it's just how you carry yourself is gonna go way longer than anywhere you at. Right. And that's what I've been living by my whole life. I carry myself as the person that I am. So I don't be worried about right. going here and somebody seeing me. I don't be beefing with nobody. I don't do none of that. Right. You know. I wanted to know that though because yeah. I, I see a lot of stuff as far as like the DFW. You know, and I was just wondering if this place unified or is it kind of like every other place cruise and tour and all that. It's kind of like it's kind of like every other place. I mean, you you got people from this hood that can't go to this hood. People right. from that hood can't go to this hood. Yeah, so it's kind of like every other place. But when it comes to me, I can go anywhere. I feel you on that. Yeah, so you got a few songs with Mo Three. Yeah. A lot of people tell me he a legend. You know, a lot of people don't know Mo Three is actually my favorite artist in the music. So. Man, I listen to that shit like law, man. I be actually acting like I'm O3 rapping this shit in the mirror. Nah, for real. You know? nah, uh, for real, yeah. How was he doing in real life? Because you knew him in real life, not the one on the cable TV. Yeah. Like, you knew him in real life. Uh, stand up guy. <laughs> uh, uh, living like he talking in his music. Uh, funny. Family man, you know, right. out the way. Mo3 one of them type of people that want to be, you going to sit in a club every night. Right. Mo3 going to go bowling. He gonna go to the movies. Mm -hmm. He gonna sit at the house. Mm -hmm. Like he wouldn't. He wanna do it all in the studio. He's not gonna be doing all the extra stuff. So yeah, he was a real nigga. Like for sure. You the goat. The, the goat. The goat. Long little goat. You know the blogs kind of portray Mo three a little bit. Well, some of the blogs portray him kind of aggressive. You know, no play play ass dude. Uh, angry. He did have good moments. He wasn't just always mad and tough. He did have good moments. I'm, I'm gonna just say this from from being around fam and him telling me the things that he told me. As far as him being aggressive, uh, and I could attest to this. Whenever you're talented, then you you feel like you're more talented than somebody that may be, you know, getting more shine than you. It don't make you a hater or a mad or nothing. It's just like okay, y'all gonna play this person, y'all gonna do this, but y'all not playing me. So now I'm gonna display this shit in my music and I'm gonna show. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make y'all play me, basically. A lot of his aggression came from people trying to, like, there's been some stories where he told me he reached out to a few artists when he first got going. And they were like, yeah, man, give me seven, eight racks. And he's just uh -oh. like, damn, LeBron, I ain't, big bro, I ain't got <laughs> seven, eight racks. I don't have it. I'm, I'm homeless. Like, right. you know, when he first started, he ain't got it. And then niggas was trying to hit him across the head, which is the business of music, so I do understand. You feel me? But, you know, he took offense to that. So I think that well, a lot of his aggression came from him feeling like people belittled him or looked down on him because he wasn't at their level. You know, I don't want to make this a Mo3 interview, but Talk I do got two more questions I want to ask you about. How did you link with him? Uh, Because y'all music, for some reason, y'all music just synced together to me. Yeah. Uh, in 2015, I met three in like January 2015. But in 2014, if I'm mistaken, DJ D-Real gave me a copy of his mixtape. Uh, Shout out to D-Real, man. Shout okay. out to D-Real. One of, one of the street DJs around here, you know. Okay. Used to, okay. You need to go interview him too. Okay. For sure. But uh, he gave me a copy of three CD and was like, hey, my artist, he from, he from North Dallas, check him out. Okay. I was like, bet. I put the CD in the back seat and I rode around with it for months. <laughs> like, seriously. And I, I got tired of listening to the music I was listening to and I popped it in one day and it stayed in my dick for like six right. months. Right. And then, like a few months later, I, I met three at the studio, Air Drum Studio with Bud and JT. And uh, 
I was like, look out, bro, what you what you doing for the features? Cause I'm all right, I'm coming straight in the game with the business. Right. I'm already understanding how it work, you know what I mean? Right, I already I'm know, like, no, what, 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 I ain't gonna even get on get on camera and cap like a lot of these niggas. I ain't pay for that. I'm like, bro, what you doing for the features? You know what I mean? I'm already understanding this man hotter than me, and I'm trying to, you know. Right, right. I had a song on the strip club called "Say My Name" that was already moving at this time. Okay. And so he was like, bro, uh, I'm doing five five to seven hundred for a feature. I said, let me get your number. I get I get bro number. And then a couple months later, I'm listening to some R&B music, mm -hmm. and I get my my producer at the time, Lil Mister to send me some R&B beats. Okay. And at this time, I had another guy that was gonna sing the hook for me I wrote. But like Halloween, the day before, Shadows Below the Drop in 2015, Halloween, I hit up three and was like, hey, I got this hook I need you to sing. What you gonna charge me? And he was like, bitch, they chunk me something. And I was like, I right, bet, I'm gonna set up a session right now. So the next day on Halloween 2015 at mm. noon, we went to Air Drum Studio. I gave him the melody. She says she wanna ride with a nigga like me. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I got it, I got it. And I, t <laughs> I text him the lyrics, found one in the booth, and he got to doing this talking and shit. And, mm. and I just had goosebumps. And I looked at Bud, Bud looked at me, he was like, he was like, bitch, you got one. Yeah. And when he recorded when he recorded the hook, he had to leave because he was dropping shot of reloaded that day. Right. And uh he was like, bitch, send it to me whenever you finish. I was like, I right, bet. So I get in there, bitch, I do my thing, I email it to him. He sent me the fire emojis and texts. Like, yeah. this is so hard. I was like, appreciate it. He was like, what you want to do with it? I'm like, we're going to shoot a video and shit. So we just went from there. Mm, that's went from dope. There. And that, that kind of seemed me in our relationship. When he he had already knew who I was from hustling or whatever in the, in right. the, with the music. But when he heard that song, he was like, yeah, bro, got right. some. You know what I mean? You got your music right. Yeah. You got the business right. Yeah, I can see how he wanted to fuck with you on that. But y'all did multiple songs. Yeah. Shit, you know So I want to ask you one more question about my when you got that news, you know, because I'm based in Chicago. That hurt me when I got that news. I never met Mo. Uh, I spoke with him several times in the DM. Yeah. Um, that hurt me, though, you know, to see some shit like that. First thing came to your mind when that news hit the internet. Mo 3 passed away. I was on my way to Detroit. Uh, I couldn't believe it. And, and to be a hunter, which I thought I was a stunt. Mm. I ain't gonna even care about our bros are just flexing for the internet, you know. Yeah. Uh, it fucked me up. I ain't gonna even lie. It hurt me. It hurt me. Yeah, yeah it fucked me up. You know, did shit like that kind of separate the city and shit? It did. It did. That separate yeah, most the definitely. City. Like, without a shadow of a doubt, like, still. Yeah. Still. And, I, and honestly, I was gonna quit rapping. Yeah. Like, when three got killed, I was gonna, I was gonna stop. I was done. Yeah, I didn't even wanna do the shit. I didn't wanna do it no more. Like, just I honestly, just one, and I, I was done. Like, fuck it, I'm done. Mm. Yeah. You know, you got a face car. You you watching, and you being careful, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that Mo3 shit got my mind wondering now. You know, I know you got a face car. You be doing music. You making sure you are moving around right now. I'm moving around the way I supposed to move around, for mm. sure. Like, I got another question I want to ask you, and it kind of go with this question. Now, this is the question I'm going to ask you without being police -y. Yeah. But I am going to ask you. I saw that in your bio, too. I'm fucking dead. I don't even lie. <laughs> but I am going to yeah. ask you this question. You know, anybody jumped in your DM? Anybody pulled you to the side, hollered at you, made it felt some type of way? Because you got songs with Moe and Yellow? Nope. Mm -hmm. Understand the Strictly Business? Strictly Business. Mm -hmm. and, and quite naturally, before the beef just rose to it, I was already like doing music with Yellow. In the strip club, we yelled throwing money to my song, just like he throwing money to his song. You know, it was already kind of like seeing each other. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. The internet, you know, though, but you don't, you know, the internet kind of got stories that those guys had a beef going on, okay? Uh -huh. In Chicago, they got this thing called picking sides, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that out here? Or well, people can do what the fuck they want to do out here. And I honestly, people gonna do what the fuck they want to do. I mean, quite naturally, there's some backlash gonna come behind whatever you do, right. depending on who you are as a person. But like, yeah, you can do what the fuck you want to do. Ain't nobody trip. Right. You know. You knew the legendary Roy Lee too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I heard about his story. The fans sent it to me. They told me he was a comedian that might have got involved in some street shit. Yeah. I don't know too much about that. I ain't gonna get into that. But what I'm gonna ask you is. That Roy Lee shit, you know, people in the city didn't like when that shit happened. I was locked up when that happened. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when I heard about it, I, I kind of felt like, oh shit, you know. Ain't he a comedian now? Yeah. Shit happened to comedians too? 
I mean, look, it happened. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the, what the, uh, the basis behind it or what, what happened, the intent behind it. I just know what happened. You know, like I said, I was gone when it happened. Yeah. The internet, something everywhere. Huh? Internet, a motherfucker. Yeah. That's I heard about it in jail. Like, damn. Like, mm. Yeah. Actually, I heard when he got shot first, and he was still alive. Yeah. I was like, damn, they, they didn't pop three? I mean, uh, really? Yeah. Like, fuck. And then he later on succumbed from those injuries. Yeah, and I already yeah. died. You know, really, uh, I'm, I'm real good with his family. Like, his whole yeah. family. Like, yeah, we grew up, me and his family grew up together. Like, uh -huh. yeah. And he was funny, I'm not going to lie. He, yeah, was bro, he was a class act. Yeah, I think he would have been one of the big ones right Like now. Desi, he'd have been up there with Desi. Yeah, like, for sure. most like, definitely. Yeah. You knew C. Struggs too. You know what, Fresh? You know a lot of people, well, man. What's going on with man. this shit, man? Man, I'm just one of them people. You know, <laughs> C. Struggs from the cliff. Yeah, I'm, I'm from the Grotto. Yeah, I'm from the Grotto. Why so I'm good everywhere? Right. I'm good everywhere. Well, Struggs really a legend like that? Struggs a legend. A legend. Long little fat crib. Like for uh, sure. Somebody yeah. told me he had a million songs, man. A million videos. Man, Struggs got that shit still. Yeah. He still gonna talk that shit. They they finna drop uh Why My Hustle Three by the oh, way. Oh, so he do got more. Why music. My Hustle Three on the way. Oh, yeah. that's dope. Yeah. You a songwriter, bro? Yeah. How you get into that? My whole life beating on my mama backseat. <laughs> I was a kid tapping on the table with the pencils in school. You know, just always been musically inclined. Waking up at seven in the morning on the weekends, cleaning the house, jamming Ozzy Brothers. My mom as a kid. You know what I mean? Just uh, my cousin. He a legend in the city. Mm -hmm. K Rock, you know, Mr. Pookie, Mr. Lucci, oh, K Rock. Shout out K Rock. That's my cousin. Oh, I that's ain't my cousin. Know that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Oh, that's, that's my dope. fam, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But with the songwriting shit, though, is it. Do you got to keep that secret? You can't tell people you wrote for people and shit. Gotta... I'm a songwriter. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and be quite, honest, quite honestly, I started out being a songwriter. Right. The only reason why I started rapping is to let people know I can write their songs. Oh. Yeah. Right. That's the only reason why I even started rapping. But the songwriting shit hard, though, man. Anything that's worth having is going to be difficult. Right. Anything that you're trying to do in life that's worth it is not going to be easy. Right. You know what I mean? And like like, like I just said, I, I had to rap in order to let people know, hey, I write songs. Because they're not going to respect your songwriting if you can't make a good a hit. Right. And, and that's, that's, that's what it is. Why did it take Dallas so long to get the looking right? I mean, people know about people in Houston and I'm, shit I'm, like I'm that. I'm going to be real with you. For a lot of people that's been on The Rock, Dallas really been, we've been it. I mean, go back to DOC, NWA, mm -hmm. he was writing. Mm -hmm. The legendary DOC was pinning okay. for Dre them back then. So, you know, we kind of, Erica Badu, you know, she a rapper too. We, right, we kind of okay. been, yeah, we kind of been there. You know, it just, we hadn't had no, you know, Yellow was the first one to kind of like, right. like pop pop. And I was, I was locked up. Like, you know what I mean? I was locked up when he pop pop. He was the first one to really just top 10 on the billboards and all right. that, you know, on some street shit, on some hood nigga shit. You know what, what about I mean? Go Yeah, yeah. That's not considered Dallas. That's Fort Worth. That's Fort Worth. I mean, the phone, DFW, Metroplex. Okay. What's the difference? I don't get it. Dallas is not Fort Worth, or Fort Worth is not Dallas? What's the difference? 30 minutes. Okay. 30 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I, don't I mean, but, but on the cold, some people in Dallas have never been to Fort Worth. And some people in Fort Worth have never been to Dallas, and I never oh. understood that. Like, it's a whole other city like 30 minutes away. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I always wanted to know that though, because somebody told me don't 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 call a Fort Worth dude a Dallas rapper. No, I don't do Dallas that. Rapper first don't first. don't do that because of some people, smile minded, and I'm gonna just be hundred with you, shallow. Right. If somebody say fresh you from Fort Worth, I'm gonna say, nah, bro, I'm from Dallas. I'm not gonna be offended by somebody right. calling saying I'm from Fort Worth because I fuck with the funk. Now you might have another artist from the D that may be like, hell no, I'm from. Right. And I, and I get it to a degree, but it's just like, you know, I fuck with the funk, so there's right. no pressure. So that shit means something. Yeah. That's crazy. I ain't know that. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you a tough question, bro. You know, I, you're not just Mo3. It's other rappers out here now. I've been seeing it. It seems like it's a rise in artists losing their lives and shit. Now. Yeah. Seems like once you get a million views, you instantly become an op or something like that. Yeah. Uh, where that come from? Is it dangerous for rappers? Where that come from? The substance in their music. Oh, the music. Yeah, the substance in their music. What you mean by that, though? What they rapping about. What they rapping about. And then some of these niggas really out here stepping in the streets and then they putting <laughs> them in wax. Oh. And so quite naturally, they make you an easier target because of now the shit that you did in the streets, you putting it on the song and now you can book for shows and everybody know where you're going to be at. Oh. You just fucked my head up with that. Yeah. Everybody know where you're going to be. Everybody know where you're going to You, you got to post it. 
Um, the promoter's not gonna pay you unless you post it. Uh huh. Press, you just fucked me up with this. Yeah. Right. Everybody know you're gonna be here. Ain't no hide, no. Huh? Okay, you can't. <laughs> so quite naturally, you gotta you gotta come uh, strapped up. Uh -huh. And you know, whoever you beefing with, I'm sure they're gonna be strapped up waiting on you or whatever the case may be, but you know, you gotta be protected at all times. What them shows look like? Somebody told me that you know what, well, somebody told me you don't really need the music industry. You can pop it off just in the Houston area. I mean in the Texas area on its own. Texas is pretty big. That's real? Texas is big. Uh -huh. Houston only three hours away. Right. Houston the biggest city in Texas. Right. Houston and Dallas Fort Worth. You know, you you know, we to get metropolitan, right. but like, yeah, it's it's just between Houston, Dallas Fort Worth, San Antonio, Austin, that's a lot of people. Right. Millions of people. Like right. you can go platinum right here in Texas. Right. No bullshit. That's crazy. And I remember some Slim Thug said a while back. He was like, I'm not worried about the East Coast or whatever. I, just, I can go platinum in Texas. Oh, and it's, it's the truth. We got a lot of people here. That's wow. I, I get it, though. I get it. That's wow. Houston linked to this place, though. It's all love for Houston. It's all love, yeah. It's love. Yeah. For sure. Internet kind of make it seem like it be some shit. Though. It's always going to be right. a, a, a small group of shallow-minded people, small-minded people putting one city against the other city when we all in Texas. Right. You know what I mean? We all in Texas. Tough question right here. Yeah. Who the king of Texas? I am. <laughs> Who the second king? I am. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's what we want. Okay, there we go. Nah, Most definitely. Sure. Most definitely. Hibachi. What's that? My style. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Chop like a bachi can stop me walking wasabi I'm cocky like I'm rocky, you know. Uh -huh. I get the chopping. You know, twister, he twist, I chop. There's a difference. Uh -huh. That's dope. You say you chop. I chop, yeah. Uh -huh. So that's your movement, the hibachi. Hibachi. Okay. Hibachi style. Out right now, go get that. Uh -huh. So the whole project coming? Welcome to Hibachi, we're on the way. Okay. I ain't got a date for it yet, but right now we just we pushing Hibachi style, featuring Hollywood Baby uh -huh. on our platforms right now. Go okay. get that Apple Music, Spotify, Title, Amazon, uh -huh. Google Outlet. Go get that. Oh, you got this shit on all the platforms? It's on all the platforms. Okay, when we get the video? Uh, I'm pushing for this week and next week. Okay. It's coming soon. Okay, so we are going to get a video. For sure. How many joints we getting on this? Welcome to Bots the World between 15 and 25. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody told me they were dropping a project with four joints on it. Oh, that's an EP. <laughs> I need more. That's an EP. Four, that's, a, that's a sample. Right. You got to give us more than four. Yeah, I'm, I'm between 15 and 25 songs. Okay. We're going to get a few videos? A lot of videos. Okay. What about a deal shit? Independent, doing this for the hood, or you would take a deal? Well, right now, we SMG, so we're from Musical. We independent right now until, until the proper deal come across the table. What's the proper deal? Uh... A proper deal to me is a situation that's going to put my family in position to be okay while I focus on what I need to focus on. A couple hundred thousand? Depends on what, what that entails. See, you know, you got some people signing life with for a couple hundred thousand. That may be <laughs> the advance. See, I ain't no stupid nigga, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, that may be the advance. You got to make that back. You got to recoup that for the label before you even start making money like points off your album and all that. So it's just like, oh. you know, it just depends. If, if it's a couple hundred and I still got creative control of my work, if it's a couple hundred and I still can maneuver how I need to maneuver, right. you see what I'm saying? Sometimes that couple hundred comes and sign your life away. Right. Because you may be getting in the way of the artists that they, they want to push and you may be better than them. So it's a lot of stuff that goes on with these labels, you know? So it just depends. Yeah, you just gave me another brain freeze, though, you know, with that. You got to make sure you know what you're signing because yeah. that might be the last check, huh? That might be the last check. And you run through that 100000 you done bought ice, you done did all this stupid ass shit. Whoa. You ain't invested probably because I got a deal and I'm good. And, <laughs> and then they hold your album back for two years. And now you're going to spend all the money. Damn, that's crazy. I can see why artists be fucked up with the labels. Getting yeah. Yeah. You know, I didn't see that. That That's crazy. So, you know, unless they be talking the right numbers, you would consider a deal, but it got to be. It right got to be the right number. Yeah, it got to be the right deal. Okay, most definitely. Uh, if you had an upcoming artist run up on you today, they want some advice from you. They just seem fresh in this shit, bro. They see you on the YouTube, they see you on social media, they see you got a presence on the IG. They want some advice from you. What you gonna tell them? And don't say they're working hard because that don't get them to look, man. They don't Consist get a million views. Consistency. Consistency. Yeah. In anything that you do, you gotta be consistent. You gotta be consistent. What's some, what's some extra sauce though? You know, cause I get the consistent, but bro, you got a million views. How you bad, how you bad right? Like how you bad right? right? This shit costs. This ain't free. Right. The beat costs. Uh -huh. The studio time costs. Uh -huh. The artwork costs. The mix and the mastering costs. The video costs. The promoting costs. It costs. How you gotta invest in this shit. Gotta invest. And if, and if you if you're lucky and smart enough, you may be you may record yourself. You may learn how to do artwork. Uh -huh. Hell, you might even learn how to record your own video. So you know it just depends, but it costs. So that's what you did. Nah, I paid. Right. Invested in yourself. Yeah, I invested like a motherfucker. Thousands of dollars like uh -huh. Yeah. 
And that's how you get to that's how the buzz happens. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it wasn't just money. It was me. I'm, I'm, I'm rapping my SUV with my mixtape cover. I'm riding around. My, uh, yeah, I'm doing that type of shit. I'm, I'm, I'm paying DJs to spend me in the club. I'm getting on the blogs. I'm, I'm doing everything, anything to get in their face. But I got them hard copy CDs. I got them flash drives. Every time I go to the gas station, I'm putting a stick on the gas pump. Uh, it's marketing. You got to be seen in this shit. That's the only way you gonna you make. Know, it. You just fuck my head up with some of that shit, though, friend. You said them stickers on them pumps and shit. Whatever single I drop, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a poster about the size of my hand. Uh, I'm gonna be pumping that gas. I'm gonna up, stick that bitch right there with a the pump seven there. So every time somebody hop out and get gas. They gonna oh shit! They gonna see it, and they might not acknowledge it, but they gonna see the the, the colors of the artwork. Right. And then when you pay for that sponsorship on Instagram, they might it might come across their screen, and guess what? They gonna tap it because they already seen it. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. Hey fans, if y'all watching this shit, I think bro just gave a play, and I think that's a serious play, bro. Nah, for sure, right? Most definitely, you gotta have that business side ready and shit. What's something they shouldn't do? Expect something for free. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Features. Mm. DJ to spend them in the club, uh, just anything that may cost, just because you go hard, it don't mean nothing. You can be the hardest, you can be harder than Jay Z, you can be harder than Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> I mean, it don't matter, right? You still you gotta know? pay. Uh. But, but another thing, a lot of people fall short of their blessings by always thinking money, and I'm talking about the people that could be. Uh. And I'm a, and I'm gonna just bring my family one more time. Three, just like you know, when he approached certain people and they was like, "Give me some money." And he might have paid him, but he might have felt fucked up about it because he felt like he, you know, he was, right. you know, some people want you to pay them for you to get them attention. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a, a graphic designer that be in my DM, like, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I got dope artwork. What do, what do you reaching out to me, but you asking me to pay for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't, don't get in my DMs. Reaching out to you. Hey, man, I got dope artwork because you see what I'm doing. You see me mm -hmm. have emotion. Mm -hmm. So you want your artwork to be seen, right? So this is what I tell all people that jump in my DMs, graphic designers, videographers, hey, if you in my DMs and you asking me to do some work for me, you got to show me what you're worth mm -hmm. because I already have people in place for that. I got three graphic designers. I got three, four cameramen. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So now you got to do something in order to catapult yourself ahead of them. Yeah. And even, you might just say, bro, chunk me $100. And I might be like, right, I'm chunk you $100 on the street. You going to come out, you going to shoot me a video. I like it. Like, damn, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's lock in. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, that's how you market because of, when you go into a dream, take some money, you're going to lose. Mm. Chase the dream, the money going to follow. Mm. Yeah. You ever thought about blogging? You ever thought about telling your story and shit? Bro, I think people are listening to you, bro. I'm working on a documentary right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who is Fatboy Fresh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, bro, I think you, you got some dope stories, bro, that the people don't really know about. Um, I got a few more questions I'm going to ask you, Fresh. I ain't going to hold you too long in this shit. I want to learn more about the DLW. I want to learn more about this area, more about shit that you know. This is my cheat code. This is how I actually grow fast. Yeah. So if it's possible, can you name me three artists I might not know? And even if I know them, that's cool. Name me three artists that you think dope, that got a dope story, that you think might be next up. And I'm going to invite one of them in front of this camera in two weeks when I come back. If you don't want to name nah, them, you nah, can DM nah, me. I, I ain't, no, nah, I ain't. Okay. I ain't one of them them cats. I'm not for the name job. Look, right. I fuck with you. I fuck with you. It ain't about uh, off the top. Just K K twenty fame. Okay, K twenty. You can DM me. They text. K twenty fame. Uh, DJ D real. You gotta get D real in. D real. You gotta get DJ D real in. Uh, mm -hmm. Man, that's so many. You said three. Mm -hmm. Right here in Dallas. Dallas Fort Worth. DJ D real. K twenty fame. I'm gonna go with somebody I know. It's a couple artists that have emotion, but I don't know them. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go. What are you thinking? I got somebody in mind. Who? Uh, I don't know if you listen to Pluto yeah, Perfect. I don't yeah, know. Pluto Perfect. Pluto Perfect. Pluto Perfect. Pluto Perfect. My guy say Pluto Perfect. So we going. I don't know. I don't know Pluto. Mm -hmm. I'm about to learn. I'm about to know about him in a minute. Pluto mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Most definitely. I'm gonna check them out. I'm going to DM one of these guys, and I'm going to invite him back in two weeks when I come back out here. That's a bit. You're going to see him in front of this camera now. That's a bit. Um, 
Hardest song you got out right now? People want to type your name in right now. When they type in Fat Boy Fresh, what's the hardest record they gonna find? Every record hard, but just type yeah. in Fat Boy Fresh and, and just click the first thing you see. About this there, about it's a Hollywood yeah. baby. Uh -huh. All platforms, right, motherfucker? Now go get that. Most definitely, y'all check that out. What's all the social media? Fresh, somebody want to get up with you? Another blog site want to get up with yeah. you? Somebody think you're dope and just want to give you a bag of money? What's all the social media? Uh, Instagram Fat Boy Fresh with a P P H A T B O Y Fresh. Underscore SMG, Twitter, Fat Boy Fresh with a P, SMG, uh, YouTube, Fat Boy Fresh, SMG. Yeah. You do the TikTok shit? TikTok, Fat Boy Fresh, SMG. Okay, well, PHAT, uh. Fat Boy with a P, uh. not an F. What about, what about your Snapchat? Oh, Fat Nificent, P H A T Nificent. Uh. Got all your social media yeah. is on point. Yeah. And y'all got to subscribe to his YouTube channel too because bro got a project he finna drop any day now. He might drop it in the middle of the night in the morning, so you yeah. need to subscribe right now. Stop what you're doing. Hit that subscribe. We'll give you a little second real quick. Alright, y'all. Hit that subscribe button, because we don't know when Fresh is going to drop, but he be dropping a lot of dope content. So, y'all rock with me. I want y'all to make sure y'all subscribe to Fresh and y'all get that music out. Fresh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with y'all. Sure. Before we get up out of here, Fresh, you think you can give us an exclusive story that nobody knows about Mo3 if it's possible. I always like to end the interviews with if it's possible. Can you tell us an exclusive story about someone that you know that the world might know that we don't know? Because you done did songs with Gala, you done did songs with Mo3, you done did songs with yourself. Because I think you're on your way to being on point on this shit, bro. You got a story that you think the fans are like between you, C. Struggs, you know, you can get songs from Yellow, Mo. Me, me and uh, me and Strugs, uh, we went to college together. Oh, y'all did? Yeah. I did not we know that. Played football and shit. Uh, oh, y'all played football. My my partner, my best friend at the time, we ain't that nigga. Uh, my best friend at the time was beefing with some niggas from the cliff. They didn't like him. I went to a different college the semester before. Uh -huh. So when I pull up, he already got ops. He already got niggas that didn't <laughs> like him for whatever reason. He right. dirty macking with them hoes and all that type of shit. So, you know, they don't know me, but they just, I guess they think I'm a hoe because he a hoe. Right. So, Strugs had took my phone. My cell phone, it fell out of my pocket, and he picked it up playing. And he wasn't fat then. He was this, this <laughs> he wasn't fat then. Right. He was cut up, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm like, bro, let me get my phone, you know what I mean? Like, and I, 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 I guess he seen I was serious. Like, I ain't playing. Like, let me get my phone, you know what I mean? Right. Like, bro, I'm just playing, bro. We do. See, Strugs a scoring motherfucker, man. Every day we was in the cafeteria, he riding down on my ass. And I ride down back on him. <laughs> <laughs> My nigga see Strugs, and as far as three, uh, I remember, uh, what song was it? He said something about Shell Shack. Like, two weeks before he recorded that, that song where he was like, my, my chick took me to Shell Shack and I ain't never had it. He was just telling me, yeah, my, my little chick finna come pick me up and take me to Shell That's Shack. Crazy. And then when I heard the song, I was like, this bitch. So yeah, he, real he, really, he, really be, he really be living. Like, he be talking, you know what I mean? I ain't seen no cap. I mean, I ain't gonna, I'm just, man, I ain't seen no cap. That's dope. Yeah. Last thing I want to ask you in this shit, Fresh. Give a young man some advice, you know. A young man want to jump in this rap shit. He finna drop a racket. It's dissing all the ops. It's dissing 50 niggas. What's some advice for this young man just being a young man in this world? I got a son that's 13, too. What would be, you tell Be prepared for what come with it. Uh -huh. Be prepared for what come with it. Uh -huh. You know, people don't like to get embarrassed. People don't like to get talked about. People don't like, you know. So just if, you, if that's how you want to step, if you feel like you're the biggest, baddest motherfucker in the world, just be prepared for what come with it because there's a lot that come with it. Uh -huh. For sure. So nobody's looking at this wreck it's like he just doing that shit to get on. If you disrespect somebody dead family, they gonna come to you. Yeah, for sure. Right. Like I mean, you know, that's how that's how it's gonna be. Yeah. Nobody's looking at it like it's just entertainment. Of course we know that and we and I know the motive of somebody did that like this, like you know what I mean? But like quite naturally you still might ruffle some feathers. Right. So you know, you just gotta be prepared for what come with it. Uh -huh. You gotta make sure you got your eyes on the swivel, your head on the swivel. You know <laughs> Most what I mean? definitely. Yeah. What's that Instagram again? Fatboy Fresh underscore SMG. P H A T B O Y Fresh underscore SMG. On YouTube? Fatboy Fresh SMG. I appreciate the love, bro. I read it. It's the only true tell history reporter. Blit, blit, uh -huh. blit, blit, blit. Love, bro. Damn, my joint. Damn, camera's 